in contrast to the uh, Bertrand competition, um, we also have Cornell competition. Instead uh, of focusing on uh, choosing their price, firms focus on their quantity decision. Um, oligopolists in local markets may compete on price, but um, producers in larger markets, especially in commodities, have to set their production numbers uh, because capacity constraints uh, keep each firm from losing all of its customers. Uh, so this is what Cornell competition is. Instead of solving for P, we solve for Q. Uh, Cornell models are just oligopoly models in which each firm chooses its production quantity rather than its price. What are the model assumptions? Again, we're going to say that firms make identical products. They compete by choosing a quantity to produce. Uh, all goods sell for the market price, which is determined by the sum of quantities produced by all firm firms in the market. And firms choose quantities simultaneously. So let's set it up. Let's assume that there are two firms in the Cornell oligo oligopoly. Each firm has the same marginal cost C. Both firms simultaneously choose their production quantities, Q1 and Q2. The market inverse demand is given by P equals A minus B times capital Q, where capital Q equals firm one's quantity plus firm two's quantity. It's just saying that uh, the total market production is made up of the quantity that firm one produces and the quantity that firm two produces. Firm one's profits are as normal. Uh, pi one firm one's profits equals Q1, the quantity that firm one produces, times the market price minus the constant marginal cost. What the uh, complication here is that we're going to substitute in for P, we have this P equation, P equals A minus B times capital Q, and we substitute the capital Q uh, equals Q1 plus Q2 in here. So we go from pi 1 equals Q1 times P minus C to pi 1 equals Q1. That remains the same. And then we're going to take this equation, A minus B times capital Q, so Q1 plus Q2 minus C. All we've done is substitute in uh, our equation for P. Firm 2's profits are exactly the same, except instead of Q1 here, we're multiplying by Q2, since we're looking from uh, Firm 2's perspective. The important thing to note is that each firm's profits depend on the actions of the other firm. So Firm 1 has Firm 2's quantity in its production, in its profit function. And similarly for firm two, uh, Q1's production is in its profit function. So how do we find equilibrium in this case? Um, let's do a real world example. Assume that there are only two countries that uh, supply oil to the world, Saudi Arabia and Iran. Each has a constant marginal cost of $20 per barrel. Their inverse demand is given by 200 minus 3 times capital Q, where capital Q is equal to the quantity that Saudi Arabia produces plus the quantity that Iran produces. Solving for the equilibrium in this model is similar to the monopoly case, except that the capital Q is the sum of quantities, not just one firm's quantities. quantity. Uh, rewriting this inverse demand curve by substituting in uh, this capital Q and for Q, we have price equals 200 minus three times the quantity of Saudi Arabia plus the quantity from Iran. So simplifying it, uh, that's what we have. Now the slope of the marginal revenue curve is twice the slope of the inverse demand curve. For Saudi Arabia, this means that the marginal revenue is equal to 200 minus 6Q times Saudi Arabia minus 3Q times Iran. The only thing that's changed from the uh, inverse demand curve in the previous slide, so here we have the inverse demand curve 200 minus 3Q Saudi Arabia minus 3Q Iran. The marginal revenue function for each country is going to be changing, doubling the slope here. 
So we have minus three Q Saudi Arabia here. Saudi Arabia's marginal revenue firm is minus six times Q. Now we want to solve for Saudi Arabia's profit maximizing output. We say the marginal revenue for Saudi Arabia is equal to the marginal cost. So we substitute in and then solve for Q. So Q Saudi Arabia is equal to 30 minus 0 0.5 Q Iran. Similarly, Iran's profit maximizing output is QI equals 30 minus 0 0.5 QSA. The important part here, similar to the profit functions, is each firm's quantity decision depends on the other firm or the other country's quantity decision. So when Saudi Arabia is trying to figure out how to maximize its profits, it has to think about what Iran is doing. Let's look at this uh, graphically. Saudi Arabia has this reaction curve. It's just what we saw on the previous slide. The quantity that it's producing is equal to 30 minus 1 half QI. Uh, so Saudi Arabia's best response or best reaction to an increase in Iranian output is to lower its own output. You can see this just by the downward slope uh, of its reaction curve. Similarly, Iran has a reaction curve, uh, so the same holds true. If Saudi Arabia increases its production, then Iran will want to decrease its own production. They meet at this point E, which will be the market uh, demand, or the Nash equilibrium. I think it's a little more clear mathematically, um, so we can also solve for Canoe equilibrium mathematically. All we have to do is substitute one firm's reaction curve into the other. In the oil example, we have these two reaction curves. This is what I should say we're calling these quantity choices. This QSA equals 30 minus 0 0.5 QI. That's the reaction function. So we're going to plug in uh, Iran's reaction uh, curve into Saudi Arabia's curve. We're just taking this 30 minus 0 0.5 QSA and plugging it in for this QI. And so we do the algebra out and we can solve for uh, QSA. In this case, QSA is 20 million barrels per day. Since uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran have identical production costs, Iran will also produce 20 million barrels a day. Then we just substitute in that 20 million into our inverse demand curve. So 200 minus 3 times 20 minus 3 times 20. And so we end up with $80 per barrel. Uh, finally, let's look at the profits. Uh, the profit for Saudi Arabia, like we said at the start of this uh, section, will just be QSA times the market price minus the marginal cost. And so we solved for QSA. We said it's 20 times 80 is the market price minus 20. Saudi Arabia ends up making $1.2 billion in profit, and Iran is symmetrical. Uh, they also end up making $1.2 billion in profit because they're producing the same amount and they're charging the same price. So the total output is $40 million a barrel a day, and the total profit is $2.4 billion. Uh, let's finish this up by comparing Corneau to Collusion and to Bertrand uh, oligopolies. The Output in the three market structures, uh, we end up with the lowest output in the monopoly case, uh, the middle output in the Corneau case, and the highest output in the Bertrand case. The opposite is true in the price structure. So the Bertrand price is the lowest, the Corneau uh, price is in the middle, and the monopoly price is the highest. And finally, uh, the profits. The Bertrand profit is zero, the Corneau profit is something greater than zero, and the monopoly profits are the highest. Um, so as like an overview, uh, Bertrand yields the lowest profits while monopoly yields the highest.